your heyday, man. You you kept pretty heavy truck jewelry on and and right. the, and the you know the sweatsuits and shit right, like right. that. And you know how I feel about that shit. Right. Tell me where you were shopping at, man. Tell me where you was going to get your cables at, cause you kept one on. Well, we we mostly shopped on Canal Street. A few cats used to go to the Diamond District on 48th Street, but most of us went to Canal Street um, to, to get jewelry. Now, it became um, all over Brooklyn. Now all the jewelers were now having rope chains, Albee Square Mall, all of them was having it, but we mostly shopped on Canal Street because as children, kids, um, I mean kids old enough to see, we always knew Canal Street had a bunch of jewelry. Right. So before us wearing truck jewelry was the hustlers wearing the big Jesus pieces and all that. Right. And that's where they used to go and get them. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we, you know, that's what we was wearing first, copying the hustlers. Right. You know, the, 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 um, the Gucci links and the, uh, and the big Jesus pieces. But then when the ropes came out and then a few rappers, me, one of them, start wearing them, it, it, it became like a hip hop staple. Right, but you know that you know that was us that did that. I don't, I don't know where the first rope chain came from, but we used to definitely go to Canal Street. No doubt, the, the sweatsuits, the troop sweatsuits. Where were you going to get the troop sweatsuits? We at? got endorsed by Troop, so we were fortunate. Um, we did go to Delancey Street to get a lot of the stuff that we wore that wasn't Troop. So you, a lot of times you see pictures and and videos of Stetsasonic and you see velour suits in all colors. Yeah. We went to Delancey Street to get all and we just ended up buying every color. So when we was on stage or when we was like, like sometimes when we used to go on the road, so what color we gonna wear today? We gonna wear brown. And we would wear brown velour suit all the way down to brown ballets. You know what I'm saying? We wearing red, we wear a red velour suit all the way down to red ballets. Right. And then the cats who was wearing hats used to always wear the Kangos. You know, I didn't wear, I wore hats on and off, but, um, but yeah, we, we, we went to Canal Street to get all of that, and then the, Troop endorsed us, so we had a bunch of Troop. The Bally's is on Canal Street, too? The Bally's, let me see, you could buy Bally's from Canal Street. I think we used to go more like toward like like Belmont Avenue, and, and Harry's that was at the end of Pickin' Avenue always had like everything real, real Playboys, real British Walkers, real Bally's, so we'd go that, until we learned Later on, that Bally actually had a store on Fifth Avenue. Right. Then we start going to the Bally store. But we ain't know in the beginning. We was just buying the Bally brand. Off the Avenue. Probably getting charged $20, $30 more. You know what I'm saying? Until we found out, oh, this is a brand. And so we start going to the Bally store. Right. Um, in recent years, like you said, you had a rebirth online. Right. You did some records. You put in some work the last couple Thank years. Thank you, sir. Man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let's talk that. about some of the records you did, man. You always pass me off a of dope record. So, man. so I, I mean, I, I try to nutshell it, right? So, 2016, it's kind of like I said, you know, like you know, I, people hang up their boxing gloves. Like I, you know, it's like prior to that, I kind of hung up my mic on a hook, right? So, 2016, I took my mic off the hook, and I just started making records again since 2016. And now I've done like six albums. Um, you know, we've had we've had great success. We get better as we go along. So the present album, which has no visuals, is all has already surpassed all the records I put out prior to that. It's like every time we put out a record, it gets you know what I'm saying. It's it gets, called momentum. Yeah, it, get, it gets it gets a little more juice. Because I think in the beginning, right when I started doing this in the beginning. I really wanted the imagery just to be the old man snapping, like, yo, daddy will still rapping, he still got it, like right. that. As time went along, I began to actually begin, I mean, two, one thing solidly happened in my life, which I became a, a big fan of battle rap. Okay. And so I started seeing people do things with words that I didn't know was doable on record, because that's not what we do, right. right? And I'm like, whoa, we could do that? You know right. what I'm saying? Oh, I hear JC, I hear DNA. I'm like, oh. You know what I'm saying? So I started doing some different things. And, and, and as time went along, I say it this way. I say, when I started making these records, I was saying, I only make, I don't make records for the kids. I make them for their parents. That's when I started. Right. Now I'm at the point where I'm ready to do a record with the baby, J. Cole, Glock. Right. You know what I mean? Because I'm near now. But it took me a minute to kind of, from the old man snapping point, you know, it took me a minute to get to that level where I feel comfortable of almost, I'm almost there where I can put myself in the 
lyrical category. You know, people say, oh, Daddy, oh, he's always lyrical. I think I did one lyrical record with Stetson Sign, and that was called My Rhyme. That's it. Right. Nothing else is lyrical. Rakim's lyrical. Black Thought's lyrical. I'm a good rapper. You know what I mean? Right. But I start, I'm starting to do it. Like, I'm starting to really figure out, like, how to be lyrical and stuff, and that's fun. Shout out to B. Dr. God. I study him a lot, too. Okay.